Okay, take two, because I ended the first recording. Um, so basically, uh, I'm going to try doing these kinds of videos where we um, have good games, but instead of just uploading it as gameplay for you guys to study, because I think those videos aren't really getting much traction, I figure we should, you know, kind of do our job in the educational department and talk about these games and see if we can come up with um, patterns you guys can recreate in your games. Maybe you guys can learn something from watching this. Who knows? Um, but yeah, I will be explaining my thought process um, in these clips. Okay, well, not even the clips, in the, in the full game. We're going to go over it together, right? Now, of course, uh, when we are in Champion Select, when we're loading in, we want to take a look at the bomb matchup, the jungle matchup, and then, you know, later the mid matchup, the top matchup, to see how it all interacts with our balling, right? So for me, um, not sure how you guys play or other higher ELO players um, kind of think about their uh, laning phase, but I like to start with classifying our bot lane matchup, right? And uh, if you've been with this channel for a long time, you know that I like to classify them in certain archetypes or categories, if you will, right? So uh, here we have uh, Thresh, right, who uh, is a hooker, and um, I classify them as a catch support, right? We want these guys to go first, land their abilities first, and then we follow up with a very specific um, plan. So in our case, it's going to be trap on the flay, right, between the hooked target and thresh, and then we're going to queue right after that. So we need to save trap and queue for the hook combo, right? And if hook is down, we should play accordingly, like we don't want to grief, right? Um, there, or I should say, play into the enemy bot lane's win condition, which is Janna, right? They want to trade with shield and W, right? And then uh, if we go on to the jungle matchup, right? I think Rek'Sai has a... Um, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think Rek'Sai has a good matchup until 6, right? Because Olaf needs to be in melee range. He has no uh, flash to get away from Rek'Sai engage and pre-6, right? It's looking pretty good. Um, but beyond that, in, in, in terms of how Olaf interacts with our bot lane, um, Olaf ganks will look like axes. He's going to axe you to death. And we have an answer to that in the form of EW combo and lantern, okay? So this is kind of like the bare bones stuff. We haven't talked about mid or top. You know, Malphite will probably look for a timing to TP bot. And Lissandra, depending on, you know, how 2v2 mid is going, may be able to run bot. Who knows, okay? We'll, we will approach that as we see it. So let's, let's, let's fast forward in this game and um, skip to the laning phase here, right? You see that we are leashing blue. Unfortunately, Rek'Sai wanted us to leash, but... If you didn't know, we would prefer to not leech so we can get the bot priority, right? If we can push them in, we can fish for hook under tower. We can prevent them from um, trading with us on minions, right? Uh, so when it comes to matchups, we want to make sure we are looking for this stuff. The The basic start to, look, to, to, to go for these timings is when you last hit minions, right? So when this Thresh is hooking, it's kind of strange, right? Um, we want to look for a hook on last hit. But you can see here, he's kind of not doing that, right? So... Um, when Ezra is going for this last hit here, this is a timing, but of course there are minions in the way, right? So maybe on this timing, he should look for Janna. Oh, sorry, I clicked on the wrong thing. Um, oh my goodness, what is going on? On this timing, maybe you should look for Janna, right? But uh, as you can see here, um, this is just not, I mean, there's just a swing and a miss, right? So sometimes it'd be like that, right? We just chill it, right? And the instant he misses hook, Janna is walking up to try and trade with her W. Here you can see me firing a blind W trying to get a read on S0, which I, I hit. Um, usually that won't work. I would probably recommend against that unless you're testing them. Um, I got hit by a Q there. Wow. That was unfortunate. <laughs> Quite unfortunate. Um, so yeah, they get level 2. We're just um, trying to catch up here. I mean, they can't really capitalize on a level 2 because we are very close to our tower. She actually gets put into the tower. It's kind of insane. So insane that we won the... Uh, the trade even though they are level 2 that's pretty funny okay that was illegal right here is a flash flay ignite there is no way Ezreal is in level 2 and can get it there's no fucking way that's a lot we fucking fight this right but somehow thresh doesn't see the angle this is a fucking that was a fucking dub right so for example um some options we have here when Ezreal is in like that we can uh look for a an all-in okay and you might be wondering hey I thought our matchup is looking to catch on minions, right? I thought we we're trying to catch them when they go for last hits, right? When we're going for last hits, they're trying to trade with us. You're right. But then that brings us to um, kind of the secondary matchup concerns, which is what are some matchups that we can kind of, um, we're secondary in. So what I mean by secondary is primarily we're going to, it's really obvious that if we hit hook, we're, it's, it's winning, okay? So what's less obvious is, okay, what else can Thresh do? Thresh can have some kind of pseudo all-in with 
flay ignite auto attack that's all guaranteed damage right all in is guaranteed damage and or cc right so he's got flay auto attack ignite and jenna's all in is w ignite auto attack right so not as good right so in terms of all in i mean kaylin and Ezio, they both kind of skill shot based so neither of them all in are they're probably equal in all in strength right maybe Ezra has the edge with cues and conquer so when we see Ezra ian like this the first reaction we can look to is okay let's just we just all in immediately right there is no way for them to win there's actually no way for them to win we're either killing them or we're getting their flash trade with hp advantage right so that's kind of how i see um these bot lane matchups at least right um so yeah they did some really illegal shit i think thresh should have tried to punish there's no way olaf's behind them at level two um well, I get hit by another key. It was really unfortunate. So they, <laughs> that begs the question, how do we win in 16 minutes if I'm getting owned in lane, right? I got hit by a fat NATO. Oh, um, wow. Nice try on the hook. But as you can see, um, with these catch supports, it's really up to them to kind of find the angle. And it's your job to distract for them without, of course, you know, um, falling to the enemy's all-in condition, right? So Thresh is getting a little bit tricked here. But the important part for you is not to focus on the fact that he's missing, but to realize that because he's missed, we need to chill out and wait until he has hook again before we can start making active moves, right? Because otherwise, you're going to walk up to trade into Janna Shield or Janna W. It doesn't make any sense, right? You're just going to um, lose the lane by yourself while you're uh, Thresh is Oh, okay. There is the hook, right? Um, and there is exactly what we're talking about in the champion select, in the laning phase. We said very specifically, we have a catch support. So when he hits the CC, we have a prepared, pre prepared response, or I should say pre-programmed response to hook. And we said it was going to be trap and then Q on trap. And the reason why it's so important to specify is because a lot of you guys, you go, okay, you know, the plan is to trap and then Q on hook. And then, oh, fuck it. Let's just Q the wave, right? And then when Thresh lands a hook, you guys won't have Q. You won't, you won't be ready. Or... Even worse, maybe you guys use up all your traps. I've done that before, right? That's how I know you guys do that, okay? So it's very important when you're playing with catch support that you pre-program your responses to when they land their CC, okay? So here, he lands a hook, and we immediately are hitting the trap. Sorry, um, we're a little bit... Um, we wind it up a little bit, but... Yeah, here he hits the hook, immediately trap, and then we Q after uh, everything's settled, right? After he's playing everything, and we finish. Right, no problem. I mean... Sucks that we didn't get the kill, but, you know, we got the job done, right? It's not ideal that we uh, burn both sums and Thresh gets the kill, but shit, I'm down, right? Um, and you can see on the map here that uh, our millionaires have traded kills, right? Um, Lucian went for a dive, I believe. And here, with the wave, we're going to uh, slow push this wave and then push the next wave and then go home. Right? It's the classic, El Clasico, right? Slow push into crash. And I'm sure you guys um, know this pattern. Right? You can also try and slow push this if you really do not want a base, but I mean, why not take the base, right? Um, so yeah, here we're going to push. Make sure it crashes before you base. And you should note that um, Olaf and Janna could be in the tribush looking for a fast gank before you guys go home because you want to crash. He's going to pull to bait a gank, right? You've seen that before. So uh, what you need to do is prepare Lantern, right? So here, oh, and then we see Janna top. <laughs> just kidding. Janna is just top, so we can just push this for free, right? We're like, fuck it, we can stay. Janna's actually giving up on lane, right? So here we can uh, elect to completely pull, which uh, is um, don't touch this cannon wave and let it push into us. But since it's an Ezreal, I think it's unlikely we'll be able to get this done. I mean, he's going to kill the minions. Thresh won't be able to hit him with a hook. So therefore, let's just push and try and um, die. Or push and unlock Thresh to go roam, right? Either or sounds pretty good. So uh, here we're looking for a dive angle, right? Uh, in which case uh, we're looking for a hook or we're going to trade heavily and then uh, that which will lead into a Thresh play. He ends up stepping on a trap. You should put the traps next to the tower where they can't see. In this case, Thresh goes mid for the roam, right? So <clears throat> not bad. And then here we're, we're just 1v1 in the Ezra. I mean, I mean, I'm just, I guess I'm just hitting him because he lost all his health stepping on a trap. It's great, right? We just jail him, jailing him by not basing so that he can't do anything. Right, he has to stay under tower for 10 years. It's great, honestly. So, um, and then we win the 3v3 mid, which is nice, right? Here, uh, I'm just putting the trap down to make sure that he should be careful about eating into me for a trade. He wants to WE trade, but you're not going to let that happen, right, guys? So, oh, he's going to try again. So here, we're just holding headshot, seeing if he's going for it. He hits the Q instead. It's fine. We're going to push this. Janna and Olaf are coming from base, right? 
So uh, it's probably a base angle from us, right? Even though Thresh is coming out of base, I think it is the time to peace out. We need to go home and spend our money. So let's fast forward here. And um, you can see that Jenna is again roaming topside. And our jungle has started the dragon. And Olaf's red is warded, right? So here's the question again. Do you want to pull the wave? You know, it's pushing towards us. And we try and deny him. Or should we push and look for some kind of dive angle slash roam opportunity, right? And obviously, there's no roam here um, unless some fight in the river happens or on their red. Uh, honestly, it'll probably be on their red. So I'm kind of down, actually. Um, pulling, again, is not really effective against Ezreal because he's going to queue from range, right? What you'll notice a lot about these trade matchups with Janna, Nami, Yumi, whatever, when you push them in, they can't really do anything. It's really hard for them to trade because their ADC is busy last hitting on their tower, right? So usually against these champions, pushing is the golden strategy. Which is right why when you see range versus range matchups a lot, um, you'll see them trying to giga push each other in, <laughs> right? Here I was trying to be cheeky with the net, trying to hit it, get the dark harvest proc, but you know it didn't work, right? Um, lane continues on as normal. Um, we see Olaf mid here, right? So we know that this whole bot side is good. We can look for a dive. Thresh is gonna be here first. We have about 10, 15 seconds to look for something here. So we should be really trying to force this. Yep, we're looking here. I mean, he's walk past his ulti, no problem. He's got flash though, right? So, yeah, um, let's not talk about how badly I play this. Um, and let's just <laughs> focus on the part where <laughs> the dive is the correct move, okay? Yo, I play that like garbage. Okay, like, if you want to take something away from this, it's that when you make the right choice, you have a lot of leeway to screw up. You can play like a donkey and still win in a man advantage situation, okay? That's how powerful um, macro can be. You can play like an absolute animal and still come out on top. Okay, here I'm worried about um, Janna plus Olaf kind of angle. But if Janna goes for a flash W, I'm going to heal, right? Flash W now I'm going to heal. And if Olaf comes out, we're going to um, Lantern. So that's why I feel comfortable pushing this, right? Now, if she's pulling this, whatever, bro. At this point, I'm like, dude, I just got to go home. Um, there's, there's a world where we do force her off uh, of pulling the wave. But um, I'm not sure if we trust solo queue support, right? Um, which is Thresh should threaten hook and then immediately run when he sees the Olaf so he can lantern us. But, you know, I've seen in solo queue that they just fucking run in and then there's no lantern, so we died to Olaf. I love that. So, yeah, let's not do that. Um, anyways, let's fast forward. Um, they end up pulling the wave, which is fine. You end up losing um, a few minions, but it's okay. Nothing too much to worry about. And you can see that after, you know, one hook and Janna just not being in lane, we kind of have, you know control over this bot oh this is great i mean we got olaf to show bot right here uh usually if you have um, you should calculate in a gank if you can survive and the trick to calculate if you can survive in a gank is their gank assist do they have any tools to help the jungler and what tools did the jungler have so we said earlier that the olaf ganking strategy is land a million cues okay so the way jenna is going to help this is slow or nato so if you take a look at this picture right we're going to play in such a way that slow and nato are not lethal. And in fact, it is not because we have a lantern, right? So here we just flash the axe, no problem. We win, right? If you get don't like get hit by the axe and then have him run up to you, flash a second axe, he picks that up and kills you. Like that, like guys, you got remember, you gotta visualize the game, right? In terms of how they do this. Just flash the first axe, right? We've already gotten what we wanted, which is all off the waste time bot, so we are unlocked topside. Um unlocked topside being we get a rift tower looking for a dive top or looking for a counter gank mid, that kind of stuff, okay? Um, although a counter gank mid might be a little bit um, questionable at the higher elo because Jenna will be there, right? But you get the point, right? We unlock our jungler to do stuff. And here, we're not afraid of Olaf Jenna because, you know, again, we have Lantern, right? So uh, I think we take a base here, a little bit low on health. Oh, we go for a sneaky one. I like this. So this is one trick you can do if you are low. You can trick them into basing. Trick them into think you based, right? Where um, if you take a look at Ezreal's vision, right, uh, we are a little bit uh, we're a little bit low here, and he sees us running into this bush, the bush that people normally base in. And what he's thinking is, oh, okay, she's just gonna go base, right? And what you want to do with that uh, vision that uh, the, the vision that they have right before they lose sight of you, you want to try and trick them. Okay, so what do we mean by that? So these minions, this minion. After you kill it, you don't immediately disappear. There's like a second and a half or like two seconds where they can still see you. 
So you can like channel base and they think you're basing. You can run to this bush and they think you're running to the bush. You can run top or sorry, uh, into the river and they think you're up here and when in fact you can double back, that's a classic, okay? So you should always try and trick your opponent with uh, some false information, right? Another classic one is when TF pushes mid, he'll fake roam topside for a half, one and a half seconds and then immediately start running bot. Right? And bot lane will be like, if bot lane's watching the map because they're good, they're like, oh, TF is looking for a topside gank. And then immediately they're getting ulti. Right? So here, this is the trick we're using. Okay? Where he thinks we based. There are no wards here because it's swept. And we're going to try and force on him when he pushes the next wave. Because if you're Ezreal, you're thinking Kaelin based. Right? So let's take a look. So he's clearing the pink. And then he's like, okay, fuck it. I'm going to push before they come back. Right? And you can see me and Thresh just waiting. I'm just waiting. I'm just chilling. All right, all right, okay. I'm ready when you are, buddy. So he gives me the lane. He gives me the lantern. We're fucking going for it. All right? And we end up getting his flash and a bunch of health. Not bad. Right? Because now he has to go home. And he's the one who's going to lose a wave. So essentially, we're making something from nothing. Right? If we stay. We should probably stay. I mean, if you don't stay, you know, it's kind of like sus. Because, um, what's it called? Not because you have to do something, but because we can do something since the Olaf gank doesn't work, right? We already know Lantern is coming, right? We already know Lantern is coming. And if you take a look mid, Lissandra is pushing, but I don't think we will take enough damage for her to be able to dive us for free, right? There's no way, right? We just take a Lantern immediately. There's no way, right? So here you can see us, um, you can see Thresh playing for Lantern, right? We are assuming that Olaf is bot. And don't get hit by this NATO. I mean, oh God. Dude, I am playing this game like absolute garbage, right? And it is not good. Oh, there's the Olaf, right? So you can see that we are, <laughs> man, we are we are just a sponge bot lane, right? Um, in terms of basing after gank, you really prefer to stay if you can, is why your health is so important. Because if you base, you're losing waves. That's really bad. Waves and XP. You need to get as much XP and money as possible, right? So you would really prefer to stay which I do here. If you can not die to the dive, you really prefer to stay. Um, us pulling Olaf bot also has the unintended uh, consequence of Lucian knowing he's a 1v1 mid, so he's go he went for his play and killed uh, the Lissandra. And uh, it also has the consequence of their balling forgets that our jungler exists. So um, they literally die to the gank right after. And then it's funny because their top laner tries to TP to save them and also dies. It's actually kind of amazing. Look at that, oh my goodness. So easy patterns to kind of recognize here. If you are the Ezreal Janna and your jungle just ganked, you should try and figure out what their jungle is doing. Because our mid just killed their mid. And top looks pretty quiet. So where would my Rek'Sai be? You know, coming bot, right? Especially if I stay, it's a higher chance. And we saw the Olaf um, hiding in the bush there. So more of the story is um, you need to play around the junglers in the first 20 minutes of the game. And if your jungler is ganking, you need to figure out what the enemy jungler is doing, okay? Um, in this case, wow, this is the Rek'Sai Olaf matchup, no? Olaf has no ulti, he's just instantly dead. It's kind of insane. Yeah, he's dead, you press R. Here, we should um, probably hit the tower. Um, I don't know why I'm basing here. Yeah, we probably want to kind of punish, right? When you kill them, we're going to look for maximum punish possible that isn't ending. So in this case, it's the wave plus the tower. I'm not sure why um, I immediately channeled, but I should have looked mid and you know realized that there is no threat here. We're good to go, right? Their bot lane's coming from bot, mid is, you know, mid, mid is going mid, right? Olaf is dead, top TP'd and died. We, we should have been good to get the wave in. And the Rift Herald, that's a little bit of um, a pattern, a weakness of mine is not getting enough after I get the win, right? After we get the um, dub, we need to be cashing out as hard as possible. So here, after the, uh, after you guys get the bot tower, we just rotate mid, right? You can see me doing the Dust Blade build, Dust Blade Lethality build. Let's fast forward a little bit. Um, Olaf is top, so we should play bot side or counter. I mean, I'm down for either, but uh, looks like our team is going to counter. So we're going to play top side here, right? We're going to either hit mid or we're going to hover top side, right? And we're playing towards the team. It's important. We're going to take all their camps. Look, we're positioned to take everything, right? Um, and I'm like, yo, I kind of want Thresh here, guys, but he wants to camp blue. That's fine. Um, so I'm coming to camp blue with them. You can use your pink wards to set up. I think pink ward with Kaylin specifically is important. You can Q from bush, you can EW combo from bush, you can trap from bush. These are all very strong face checking options. Counter like to punish face checking options, I should say. Wow, Lucian 1v2s, this game is over. Um, they're probably so far behind he gets 1v2. <laughs> they get 1v2. 
here you can see me um the reason why i'm doing this so confidently is because lissandra knows my whole team is behind me so you know she's not gonna just e in randomly right in fact my whole team is literally right behind her <laughs> and she's like ah fuck <laughs> right so that was the whole point of the setup in their jungle so we have um we can do stuff like this olaf shows bot fuck it let's see how much we can punish which is the wave plus tower hits right remember when we get when we win the fights or get picks we need to get as much as humanly possible without getting punished and in this case we are trying to get all the minions plus the uh the tower here right so here you can see me um oh my goodness that was a little bit ambitious by malphite i mean here you can see me hitting the tower and uh malphite goes for a flash ulti i'm like bro what um yeah i think you just flash those and one one interest i mean it looks fancy but one um pattern to kind of recognize here when you're hitting the mid tower when you have flash okay your your success your success of hitting the tower like this when contested they're going to engage is dependent on how many solutions you have to their problems okay how many solutions do you have to their engage so between janna ezreal and malphite they have one engage which is malphite flash ulti and i have one solution which is flash right Lantern is also um, important, but I mean, if I have E here, it's a flash with an EW combo and we're out, right? But that's kind of the pattern you will see in the mid game. You can bait the mid fight if your team is on the map and you have a solution for every engage they have. Usually it's flash, okay? So in this case, you know, they flash Malphite ulti, we flash out, no problem, right? Um, Olaf is chilling here. I don't know what's happening here, but I would prefer to not fine just pick up the wave right as you as you can see how i'm posturing and uh at this point as long as we don't int i mean the game is just it, it's just over right and the we haven't really done anything too impressive mechanically okay this fight doesn't look great because we have no lucian but i'm down to kind of look because it's looking so good from the start which is you know it is right uh i think at this point it's over right so that's pretty much the majority of what i wanted to talk about the first 15 minutes of the game are paramount to how your uh your your mid game will go and your mid game will decide how your objectives will go and you know the objectives will win you the game right or i guess even income can be an objective sometimes right uh the early game will decide how much money you're making in the mid game because you have such a advantage right so i think um if there are big takeaways from this replay i think the ones to look for are how can we bake ganks right um oh this is funny um we're just gonna press r and asandra here <laughs> sorry segue uh, sorry, distraction. Um, yeah, how can we bait gang spot, right? Using our tools available to us, flash and lantern and whatnot. And how do we visualize the gank? So Ezreal and Janna, really easy, but they have no gank assist. So it's just Olaf axes. Really simple. It doesn't get simpler than that, right? So how do we stop Olaf axes? Okay, we prepare flash, prepare EW, you know, prepare a lantern, right? We have something in mind. And then what do we do when... Um, the enemy is on the other side of the map. We should look to punish. We should look to dive the Ezreal, right? What do we do when we are the ones getting ganked? We need, again, we need to prepare a solution to every engage they have, right? We need to prepare our flash for Malphite flash engage, right? So these are kind of the main concepts in the early mid game you need to master to have games like this. I did not even play this game well, but I made very good decisions. Maybe not the perfect decisions, but I made... Decisions that were solid and just like in chess, uh, you don't have to make the perfect move You don't have to be a robot to win, right? What you need to do is always make good decisions No throws and you will be in a winning winning position in solo queue. I promise. Okay, so hopefully um, you guys learned something from this or uh, If you like this, let me know so I can kind of keep doing this format but um, yeah, thanks for watching and I will see you guys next time. All right um, See ya